gentlemen, welcome back to the show. What's going on? Good to see you, dude. Good to see How you, are too. You? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Okay, we got a lot to talk about. Number one, the song's about to go number one here, you. So I want to talk about it first because I want to play it kind of right off the bat here. So I don't know. What, uh, there's this new thing with songs where everybody's naming them like really simple generic terms. Like there's a song called If. There's a song called From. There's a show called The. Whenever you name a song you, like that's a commitment to a pretty g broad generic word. Do you worry about that at all or do you try to find something more specific in the title? Yeah, we've run out of good ideas. Yeah. You know, we've done we've done nothing like you. We've done other things. And it's like, why not just you? That's you a great I mean? point. I think uh, originally we were going to call the song "You and Only You," but I think whenever I wrote it out, I was like, ah, it's simpler to just go "Y O U You." And uh, yeah, man, it's like love songs. That kind of stuff never goes out of style. People are always going to be looking for songs about love, heartbreak, life, and uh, it's one of those songs that was was special to us when we wrote it, and you know, we put it out on the album. It wasn't the first single that came out on the album. But uh, it was the one that the fans raised their hands and said, this is one of our favorites. We saw people, you know, I feel like this has kind of been the story of our career, seeing people, that, that's how we choose singles. It's like you see people using the song in their wedding, engagements, I, uh, promposals is now a thing. That wasn't a thing. Uh, that's how old I am. Back in the day when we were kids, there were not promposals, but kids go all out now. Um, and the song has been a part of a lot of promposals, so... I like single. yeah that the, there's like the uh, the melody of the hook is also like a Shay run at the same time and that act you know there's some there's some like strategy involved in the writing of that you like that that is what catches me to that song like that's the texture of it is in that hook Shay talk about the hook to that song and how hard it is to sing every single time you know it's a good idea to have all these cool melodies and high melodies until you have to sing them every night <laughs> and I'm just like why do we why did we do that? What were we thinking? But man, I, I think it's interesting though, talking about the one word titles and things like that. And over time we've realized, man, it's like when you try to come up with all these complicated words and you're trying to think of new words, it's like, we have a language. We have one language that I can speak. I can only, I can barely speak one language. Uh, and I think it's important to not get too caught up in the, all right, we got to think of a, a word that no one's ever thought of before. That's not going to happen. We know all the words are out there. And, I think it's important to, you know, things like you're talking about, the stickiness of that chorus of like, all right, what makes me feel that emotion? How do I portray that? I don't need necessarily a new word. We need a new way of kind of expressing ourselves as humans. And this is a, a love song. This, this song is kind of like a speechless part two. You know, this is a speechless with that moment of our wives walking down the aisle and, you know, that moment of the wedding night. And this is kind of a continuation of that. This is beyond, this is love every single day in those little moments. And, uh, I just, I love it for that. And I feel like it has a lot of that stickiness as far as like you, you, and not a you. And I think that's very, very hooky, but the, yeah, it's got very much of a, uh, a speechless, I, I'm singing because I'm sitting down at my piano and I, I feel like I'm about to play a show right now. Can you hear Straight, your piano but, uh, or are you dialed into ears? I, I'm not dialed in. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, hit it again. Hit it again. Yeah, through Zoom, it sounds like a cat, low Casio, like a, one of those kid pianos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But now we can we can tell that you're doing it. Um, I, I think the song's awesome. So I'm going to play it. We're going to come back with Dan and Jay. The song's crushing it right now. Uh, here is You, the current single. But we got to talk about new music about to come out. I hate to take one away from the other. So that's why we're dedicating this to the popularity, the success of You right now. But then when we come back, not You, Them. See, that's my thing. See? Uh, that's that's not my problem. Here they are. They have nine total number ones, about to about to be ten. Um, ask a question to you, Dan. I'll go with you. It's been ten years since you guys formed Dan and Shay, twenty thirteen. What what would you say is the defining moment for you guys as a duo? If you look back and you're like, this is the one, not that started it, but that really cemented it as we've got success and we're going to be here for a while. Oh man, I you know recently, I, Shay and I are in just a whole new place, brand new outlook on our entire career. Next time, maybe when we come back to talk about the new music, it'll be a different story. We've had some amazing, amazing moments along our journey, you know, recently while we were making this album that is yet to be announced, yet to come out. <clears throat> but uh, in terms of stuff that's, uh, that's been out there to the public, I would have to say when we won our first Grammy, maybe, or we performed on that Grammy Awards, we did Tequila. Um, that was a moment, you know, we'd had, you know, success up till then. We'd had two albums. We'd been grinding it out on the road, playing clubs, theaters, doing that thing. And that was kind of the moment where 
I think our music was exposed to, to the masses, you know, I, obviously we'd had a few hits before that, but that was really the one that, I don't know, it was just something different about it. I mean, we stood on that stage at the Grammys, you've been there, it's like insanely nerve wracking. They, for some reason, put us out in the middle of the arena on the little circular disc. I guess that's like where they put new and up and coming performers, but still you're surrounded by Beyonce and Jay-Z and all these mega superstars and you're trying to sing your song and you go on and you can hear your heart beating through the microphone. Uh, it's kind of kind of crazy, but that was that was a big moment for us. And that, I think, sent things into a new place. You know, that song kicked off the self-titled album. You know, from there we had Speechless and, you know, a couple other songs that I think were the things that sort of propelled us into arenas and, uh, and changed our world, man. But there have been so many great milestones. And it's crazy to say, it's we've known you for 10 years, man. You guys were the first people to play our music on the radio. I remember, uh, I remember getting a call, Nada, texted us or called us and said, uh, we're going to be playing 19 you and me on the show. And we were out in Bellevue before Bellevue was Bellevue in Tennessee. And, uh, we went out and blew the speakers out of Shay's Jeep whenever you guys played that. So it's crazy to still be doing it, man. And grateful for all the support you guys have shown us along the way. And I've received 2% of all Dan and Shay since, which is great. Oh, I haven't wow. really talked about that, but it's been cool. It's a deal we made way early on. It's not yeah. much money. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Hey, Shay, let me ask you this. We talk about 10 years. Did your label or management throw you guys a big 10-year anniversary party? Because I asked this because we just did 10 years here, too. We didn't get jack crap. <laughs> so did anything happen for you guys being together 10 years and having success? You know, we, did, we got this really, really special uh, reminder via text message that it had been 10 years. I was like, hey, just so you guys know, you've been together for 10 years. So, <laughs> yeah, we knew that. We knew that. We've been talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no party. No party yet. Yeah, uh, we'll that. see. Maybe they're saving it. You for know what I mean? Eleven years. I like to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, they're saving it for eleven because yeah. ten's just so over. You guys just did ten, so like that'd be pretty rude of us to do it right hey, after. Dan, you guys posted back in March. You were going on kind of a social media. We'll call it a detox. Like you're going to step away for a little bit. Uh, why did you guys do that? And I, you know, it's, it's probably a longer conversation, and I'll come over the house. We can talk about it. But it's, uh, you know, social media is it's a necessary evil. In our business, it's, you know, I'm not going to say it hasn't helped our career. It's been a great way for us to connect with fans and a great way for a lot of people to, to discover our music that may not have otherwise discovered it. I think, uh, you know, in 2021, when we were doing our first arena headlining tour, I kind of got to a dark place, you know, got a little carried away. Uh, and my focus was, you know, not maybe not where it should have been, you know, on music and creating music and enjoying the ride, enjoying where we were, enjoying that moment. And I think I was too heavy on the social media element. It was like, cool, we sold out Madison Square Garden. Okay, I need to make an Instagram video to let everybody know we sold it out. I mean, it's it's part of the thing. But I think I got to a really, really bad place there. And I was like, you know, on the on the brink of like, do I want to do this anymore? Do I want to make music? And, you know, I, I brought myself back, you know, to the basics and said, like, the reason that I'm happy, the reason that, you know, I've been able to do this for so long is because I love making music. I love being in the room with my best friend you know, sitting there talking, talking about life and, and writing songs. And we got back to that, you know, on this new project that we've been working on. But I think stepping away from social media, you know, especially like at the tail end of an album cycle, allowing ourselves to really focus on the music. This is the first time in almost 10 years that we weren't on the road, you know, a majority of the year we've been off the road. So it was like, you know what, I'm going to step away, focus on the thing that truly makes me happy. And, you know, we'll dabble back into social media whenever we start rolling out the new music. But I think if we fill our cup, so high with the things that we love which is writing creating recording making music going out and playing shows then i think the social media the stuff that we have to do on social media won't be as daunting but i think i got to a place where it fully consumed my life and uh i became a person that that i didn't want to be so i i stepped away from it for a second i think i've you know gotten a healthy relationship with social media it's it's a crazy thing man it'll it'll take you to wild places you're talking about working on a new record or new music now. When people say they're in the studio all the time, what? I mean, I get it. You're like in a room, but what do you do all day? Help help me, help our listeners. What does that mean you're in a studio all day? I can tell you what Dan does all day. He just he works. I, the man will go back and work on a vocal. Uh, that might not even be an album vocal. He'll spend six hours on it. He's dedicated. Uh, but man, this last, you know, making this album, that uh that we've got coming has been the most fun uh just kind of season i guess of of our lives i can say that i feel like for both of us because you know in that social media part of it and kind of being a little more detached from that and being a little in touch with reality with our family and just kind of living life in a healthy place 
I think it's been the funnest I've ever had making music. I mean, Dan and I have never really had the time besides our very first album to make a, an actual record and make a cohesive project of stuff that we're going through that we experienced. And uh, we actually got to do that on this project. You know, you usually have three or four months to put together an album and I don't want to say throw it together. Obviously you still try to take your time and we've always done that to the best that we could, but this is the very first time we've kind of sat down from start to finish and been like, all right, let's just get in there and have some fun and write what we want to write. And it's just, it changed everything for us and our relationship, the communication that we've had and really letting each other know where we're at in our lives and moving forward has just been, we'll go into the studio and our work for that day might be hanging out and talking about, you know, going and playing in Bobby's Idol Hour for, you know, four people. <laughs> just like thinking about the things, you know, where we came from. And I think that makes you appreciate where you're going and motivates you more of like, all right, let's really dig in and let's, our fans deserve our best. They deserve us at our best. And it's been just so much fun to motivate each other. And we've been working on our personal lives. I'm trying to get in shape so I don't have to stand next to Dan and feel ridiculous. Uh, so I, I've, it's just been a really fun journey of like, all right, I feel like we're actually working towards something and going to have a project that our fans can be proud of. And even if somebody hates it, we can with our entire heart say, this is Dan and Shay, and this is who we are, and I'm so damn proud of it. And put it out into the world knowing that that was the success, was getting it out there. No matter what it does commercially, you know, hopefully, I think we got some big old hits on there, but it's just, it's more than that. I feel like it's kind of this, it's a new era of what Dan and Shay has become. And I, just those studio moments have really just been us being together and, and living life and writing songs and recording them and just making that an entire process and season and integrating it with our lives rather than, all right, everybody panic. We have two months to make this album. So it's been really fun, man. I've, I've never had more fun making music in my whole life than, than we are right now. Yeah. But what do you do all day? That's my question. Like, no, 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 not much. No, not a lot. Dude. But like, I mean, are you singing it? Oh, <laughs> are you singing it 500 times? Are you playing a guitar part over and like the granular, in a studio all day when you're making a record because we don't get to be in there. What happens for 14 hours? Are you playing piano parts? Are you going, let's try it different? Like, tell me about what is happening. Yeah, man. I mean, I probably spend a lot of unnecessary time on things that won't make a single difference in, in a single radio spin or stream or sale or anything. Uh, maybe I, I do it, you know, to serve myself or to make myself happy. But there are a lot of things, you know, for example, we have the luxury of, you know, having the most talented, you know, it, the most talented musicians in the entire world, you know, at our fingertips on Music Row, the greatest musicians. And you go, to, go into a studio, a place like Ocean Way, you know, and you track this band and the band, you know, comes in, they hear your demo or in, in some cases on this album, we wrote the songs on an acoustic guitar, didn't even have a demo. We would sing the song in the room for the session musicians. And then we chart it out, you know, four, one, six, five, you know, the notes, the sequence of the chords, figure out the key. They would go in there and play it. And these guys are so prolific. The first take, the first pass is usually the most usable, most incredible, most brilliant sounding thing you've ever heard in your life. And then you go, okay, cool. Can we get a few more options, a few more takes? And it's easy when you're sitting there drinking your coffee at 1030 AM at Ocean Way. And you're like, yeah, just keep giving me takes. But all those takes, all those options are so good. They're all so usable. So when I go home, I take the session, I clean it up, organize it, color code everything, you know, do my OCD stuff. And then you go through and for some people it's like, okay, cool. The band was incredible on the first take, not going to touch it. That's one way of doing it. And it's totally all right. I, I dig that. I love the way that sounds. But for me, I'm like, I don't want to leave any magic. I don't want to leave any stone unturned. So I'll go through every single instrument, every drum pass, every drum fill, every bass guitar lick just in case there's magic on a take that we're not listening to. You know, there may be something that happens in the third chorus, some inversion on the bass that happens that takes the song to a whole new level, at least in my head it does, or in my heart. Uh, so I, I just want to go through all those parts, make sure we don't miss anything. And then when you pick something like that, say you pick a good bass lick in that third chorus, that may change how you approach, you know, sifting through the piano or the drums or the guitars. And it's just a... A never-ending process, but um, man, I'm I'm so proud of this stuff we're making and Shay's vocals. That, that's when you record a singer like me, you're gonna find one good take, one usable take in all the passes. With Shay, if he sings ten takes for me, 
they're all going to be absolutely incredible. I could use any one of them. So that makes it even harder to go through his vocals and say, well, okay, cool. They're all perfect. Which one is the, has the most emotion or the most feeling and yeah, it's syllable by syllable by syllable. And, That's what uh, I wanted to know right there. Wow. Cause that is a yeah. grueling process of him having to go through it. You know, both those guys having to go through so much. Uh, how many hard drives of unreleased Dan and Shay music exist? Oh my god. Oh, I got my, I, so much. I've got <laughs> two right here. Oh. I've got one plugged in back here. There's there's a lot. Just there's lots lot. of songs from over the years you've never released. Which obviously the new stuff, but I mean do you have so many cut songs that you're just like, well, we're not gonna put this on a record, but we'll just save it just for posterity or to see if we die, our family can put it out and keep making money? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, cool. There's sometimes <laughs> there's sometimes we'll go back on a song that we started recording a few years ago that you know, a great song always finds a way and a great song will never go out of style. So if there's something that you know, we started recording or working on a few years ago, it may not have made sense for that last project based on, you know, sonically how the rest of that project shaped up, but as time evolves, you know, it may make sense where you are in your current moment in life. So, you never never close the door on any chapter. We always leave them leave them rocking, but yeah, if, if I died unexpectedly, I'm a little nervous. I need to like figure out a plan of which songs, because man, there are some songs that we definitely don't want released. You know, there's <laughs> like some artists who unfortunately pass away. You know, I, I know that their estates will go and post a new one on Spotify every week. And I'm like, man, I, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> there are some that didn't come out for a reason and we should keep it that way. So yeah. we need a system of checks and balances if that ever happens. That Prince Polka album was weird, right? You know, I bet he wished that never would have come out. Uh, one final question in this segment. But we had Jesse Jo Dillon um, over, over at the house. We were talking to her. She was one of the writers of 10,000 Hours. And she tells a story about being in New York and you letting her hear the Bieber uh, uh, hit the vocal on that song for the first time. She said you put headphones on her. Now, was that one of those situations where you had to keep it on lockdown because nobody could know? So you kept it on your device only and you put headphones on people that would hear it, Dan? Yeah, it was these specific headphones. I'm such a nerd with the audio stuff. I listen to all your podcast episodes. I listened to the uh, Bobby Bones show ones too. Some good content on there. Uh, but the Jesse Joe one, it was funny. It started out like the clip from that on social media was like, yeah, Dan, we were in New York City and uh, he invited me back to his hotel room. I was like, oh, just explain more. Tell, say more. You, can't. you know, if somebody stops watching the clip right there, you know, it might be a little misleading. Now, Jesse Joe's one of our favorite people on the planet she is just she's just a wonderful soul she's incredible so talented and that was a great episode by the way but yeah she was in new york uh with her publishers mike molinar and alex Heddle, good buddies of ours um and we had gotten that back we were working on the mix which when we got bieber's vocal it was like our minds were blown we were freaking out because it's like you never expect that biggest pop star on the planet you know and he loves the song sends vocal back and it was like the vocal came back sounding pristine and amazing like really really good so we got that and i that was a special moment when she told that story i texted her i was like man i got goosebumps here and you tell that story that's that's a memory you know it's moments like that that song went on to accomplish a lot of great things for us but those are the highest highs those moments you know getting to share that with someone you care about writing a song coming up with a great hook you know getting a demo back those are the things that that are really rewarding you know obviously the number ones are great we want to keep those things coming but that kind of moment. We were in New York and she came over to the room and I, I don't think we told her who was on the song. We were like, just check out the mix. And we played it and that second verse rolled around and she was like, is that Justin Bieber? I think I have a video of it on my phone somewhere. It was it was a special night, man. And you don't send that around, right? Even to people you trust in case it could get leaked? No, uh, I, I think we had that on. I had it, I think maybe three people had it, like maybe Dan and I and maybe our, maybe our wives. Uh, and that was, a especially in the beginning, and I just remember how crazy that feeling was. Like we've had a lot of pinch me moments in our lives. And I just remember driving around being like, looking at random people and be like, you got no idea. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to tell, you know what I mean? Just like seeing some lady, you know, rolling down your window and be like, excuse me, ma'am, you might if I'll play this song. It's with Justin Bieber, but I heard of him. <laughs> and uh, it was just a crazy feeling of just knowing what's coming. And I remember I actually, I, this is probably horrible to even say out loud, but I think I cried the first time I heard it with my wife. We were sitting down in our old house and we just, Dan had just sent it to me and he's like, I think it was the only like preface was like, dude. And I was like, 
I remember sitting down and listening to that on the couch, like not over big speakers, just like on my phone and just listening with my wife and being in shock and probably tearing up a lot just because we knew that that was going to be a life changing moment, you know, and there's just, it was only come around, uh, I mean, maybe once in your lifetime of something like that. So it was pretty, pretty special being able to drive around and feeling like you have this pretty cool secret that nobody else in the world does. Dan and Shay are here. They've been hanging out with us for a long time, almost an hour. Uh, the song You, crushing it, stream it right now. Uh, to uh, Climbing its top five, probably going to be number one. Uh, we're celebrating that. But I do have uncomfortable questions that our listeners sent for you guys. And so we'll just go one at a time. Shay, I'll go to you first. What do Dan and Shay argue about the most and don't give a cliche answer? Hmm. That's a really good question. An uncomfortable this was like a year ago. This is like a year ago. I could have made you a list. Um, I feel like we worked through all of our problems, Dan. I don't know. I would say uh, if we did fight about something, maybe uh, where we're going to eat is like the most uh, difficult. That's my wife and I too. Same thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it sounds stupid, but yeah. It's, yeah, maybe where to eat. Yeah. She's like, where do you want to go? And I say, she's like, well, I don't want to I don't want to go there. And I'm like, well, you asked where I wanted to go. <laughs> like, that's like, yeah, that's okay. Next up, Dan. Uh, let's see. Do Dan and Shay say the same thing every city, no matter where they are in? Like, this is my favorite city, blank. Yeah, you've definitely got a little bit of a script, to be honest. I mean, you go up there, and <laughs> there's definitely like, I have this setup speech before tequila. I like, you know, bring the level down real quiet. It's the whole thing. We need the crowd to sing this song louder than it's ever been sung before in the history of the song. You know, you give them a little bit of the, uh, the WWE moment, but there are definitely a lot of moments that are off the cuff. You know, we, we always make sure to do an acoustic, a little breakdown bit in our show that is completely unscripted. And sometimes it goes off the rails. Uh, so maybe we should stick to the script because our sound guys out there, like guys, we, we got to cut this short. You've been doing the acoustic bit for an hour now, but yeah, we, we definitely reuse a few lines. Three. Uh, I think you'd be, uh, I mean, I think most artists probably do. Three questions left and uncomfortable questions. Shay, you brought up the fact that you'd lost a bunch of weight. What did Shay do with his old clothes that don't fit anymore? Uh, they're currently sitting in my garage. I had to, I, this is legitimately, I have four shirts that fit me now. Uh, and so I had to go to Dillard's and I think I went to Dillard's. I don't know where you get pants. I have like three <laughs> pairs of pants and four shirts. That's like the only clothes. Like this shirt, this is one of four. Yeah, good. And it's the same brand. Yeah, but they're all in my garage. If anyone wants, I have 180 black shirts, black t-shirts, large if you'd like them. Two questions left to Dan. Has Dan ever pretended to be working on a song to get out of doing something around the house for his wife? Oh, for sure. Nice. For sure. <laughs> it, it, honestly, not as much like to get out of doing something around the, around the house. I'm pretty good at the chores, but definitely to get out of social situations. Like, you know, Abby's <laughs> so social, you know. And she'll go to like these events and stuff and she'll always use the excuse like it's like 9 p.m. and he's head starts or a concert or some dinner with friends. It's like, oh, Dan has a mix revision. It's like who expects him to be doing a mix revision <laughs> streaming session at 9 p.m. on a Saturday night? Clearly yeah, it's worked clearly. or people just don't like me. I don't know. But yeah, I definitely use it to get out of stuff. Final uncomfortable question. Right this is it. This is the most uncomfortable one of all. And sometimes people turn down the most uncomfortable question. And if you don't, then we applaud you. What is the, who is the most famous person to turn down a Dan and Shay collab? Turn down? Mm. Oh, well, I'll say this. We're pretty smart, Bobby. And if we think it's going to be a no, we will not ask. Mm -hmm. We will not ask. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't, I, that we've only asked like once, oh, tw maybe twice. Kelly Clarkson. We had Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think of the other collabs. I don't think that we've asked anyone. We're, we're batting a thousand right now. Okay. Uh, but I, someone... I actually, you know, false because I asked, I did try to like pretty hard, try to get Adele on a song. I don't, it, it was no specific song, but like, hey, we should get Adele on on a song and everyone was like yeah no that'd be that'd be cool <laughs> and the she, fact she, we don't have a song with adele so if they answered uncomfortable question five we applaud them we let them yeah. go nice job rarely do people answer the fifth uncomfortable question okay dan and shay we'll be waiting for your new music whenever that is i'm sure it, i'm not even gonna ask anything about it it's it's under lock and key i've been told I, if i do ask about it i'll be met outside this building by an unhappy person. So I'm outside move. right now. Yes, we're going to move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a link, Bobby. 
and I'll share it with the whole world. Go okay. to my Twitter and I'll share the link with everyone. Can you imagine? I mean, that's kind of a thing now, right? TikTok, you leak it. You already have a release date. Yo, should I drop this? Check it out. You know, you point, yeah. My dad with my you point demo, out, my label's a- so mad I'm leaking this. And it's like, yo, <laughs> sure. nobody believes that anymore. <laughs> All right, Dan and Jay, love you guys. Uh, congratulations. We'll talk to you soon. Love you, man. Love you, Thank you for the time. It's, it's about-